ahead and head over to Dr. Sellers Educate business site and you can see full details about what our coaching offering looks like. We have complimentary coaching that's available, one-on-one -on -one private coaching for about 15 minutes where we go over where you are on your journey, your background as a nurse educator. There are specific characteristics and traits we know that help some do educators do better on the exam than others. We talk about that a little bit, as well as what your journey is going to look like regarding your time frame, the resources that you've already been able to collect, and any studying that you've done up to that point. These are common questions that I've gotten. I'm sure none of you have these. Where do I start? What's on the exam? What's the passing score that I have to reach? And what resources do I need? These are all great questions that on your journey you're sure to have. And hopefully, if you're tuning in to Dr. Seller's Educate YouTube channel, if you're taking advantage of our self-paced course or even our live review, or perhaps right now you're just attending our free webinars, that's a great option as well, depending on where you are on your journey. The most important part is that you take one step at a time, that you commit to closing those gaps and plan a date when you're going to take that exam. All right, so for this snapshot, we're focusing on competency number one, which is facilitation of learning for CNE. But there are also some key elements that are aligned with competency two for the CNE CL. All right, let's go ahead and jump in and take a look. First, we're going to start with clinical reasoning. I want to point out that there are primarily two resources, and I'm going to name a third one as well. If you have it in front of you, you want to go ahead and pull it out for those of you that are further along on their journey. First, Billings and Halstead resource, and we'll go to the next slide, and then I'll come back to, to that one to, to dig a little bit deeper into the four elements of Tanner's model. Okay, so you see on the screen here, these are four resources that we've talked about. The CNE review book, the Candidate Handbook, as well as Teaching and Nursing, 6th edition by Billings and Halstead. You also, if you're on the journey for the CNE CL, you want to make sure you have that handbook as well. And you want to go ahead and purchase the Whitman resource for CNE CL. Now, many of you, based on some of the educators that I've spoken with, may be on the journey for the CNE and the CNE CL, and that's great. The good news is that we are incorporating that into our content because we've had such a high demand for that. Uh, many nurse educators are on the CNE CL track, and that's great. We know that the CNE is a mark of professionalism, and either track is fine. Just make sure you review the criteria for eligibility to ensure that you are going to be ready once you submit that application. All right, back to content. Billings and Halstead, I want to make sure that you focus on Chapter 18, Teaching and Nursing. That's where you're going to find in Box 18.1 clinical reasoning. There's an excellent clinical reasoning example there. I want to make sure that you take some time to look at how clinical reasoning is defined. And that starts on page 336, digging into some of the key characteristics and examples of effective clinical teaching. I do want to involve or identify that the text also reiterates the importance of teaching behaviors that include motivating strategies to help students be successful and also recognize the connection between the classroom um, or the theory, the theoretical elements and clinical application. Okay, that is the ultimate uh, validation of clinical reasoning, the ability for students to connect the concepts, the theoretical content that they've learned in class and able to apply that. And especially with nursing students in the clinical setting, as nurse educators, we want to ensure that we talk it through with the students so that it makes sense. Just as the term clinical reasoning says, we want students to be able to have a good reasoning, a good understanding, uh, a good rationale behind the actions that they're taking. Similar to what we talk about during our sessions when we look at practice questions, right? What do I always say? That's right. It's just as important to understand the rationale of why the other three answers are not correct as it is to understand the rationale as to why the one answer is the best answer. All right. So let's take a look back at box 18.1. Again, this is Billings and Halstead in the sixth edition, page 338. It gives an example of pulmonary edema. There are some relevant cues that we would expect our students to be able to 
assess and articulate, right? And then there's a section called anticipated collaborative intervention. So as a result of um, crackles or reasoning, what actions do we expect our students to take? For example, putting the, the patient in a semi or high Fowler's position and the anticipated outcome, decrease shortness of breath, increase FiO2, increase or improve saturation level, oxygen saturation level. So that's one example of a clinical reasoning scenario related to a complex health condition that we would want the student to be able to talk through and ultimately demonstrate some of the um, application of the clinical expertise associated with um, the patient that is experiencing pulmonary edema. All right, so now let's take a look at your CNE review book, okay? Again, if you are on your journey for the CNE CL, you can take a look at Whitman's um, practice test questions. It's mainly practice test questions, but there's some content in there as well regarding clinical reasoning and uh, critical thinking and clinical judgment. All right, so now we're gonna focus on critical thinking when we look at your review book, it's on page 12. Take a look at scenario 1.4 make sure that you read the scenario and then you want to answer the five questions that are following. Now, before you think about it, I do realize that the answers are not in your review book, okay? But that's okay. The most important thing is that you process some of those key concepts that are identified in those five questions. And it may spark some questions that you have and do know that Dr. Sellers Educator is here to support you again on your journey. So during your coaching session, it would be a great experience for you to talk through scenario 1.4 if you had any questions about any of the content related to critical thinking in that specific scenario. All right, so now let's go back to critical thinking. You see at the very top, the, the text talks about three main areas of disposition, being willing to to question everything by being a truth seeker, inquisitive and open-minded. These are all ways that we as faculty have to demonstrate a willingness or, or be open-minded regarding development of critical thinking, okay? This is how we mold and shape and role model with our students the development of this really important skill, right? Okay, so being open-minded, encouraging students to ask questions. B, the desire to give structure to thinking by being analytic and systematic. And C, being confident yet judicious in the face of uncertainty. Okay, so these are all traits or characteristics that we need as faculty nurse educators to support the development of critical thinking. And then the text transitions into what is called the four Tanner's four steps of clinical judgment. And they are listed here for you, noticing, interpreting, responding, and reflecting. Each of these steps is really important to advance the level of knowledge and clinical judgment skills that the nursing student must have as they go into the, the world of nursing, okay? This is how we ensure that they are applying safe clinical practices as they transition uh, from the student nurse into the registered nurse practice and independently. All right, there's a couple of key elements that I wanna point out first. Go back and take a look at each of the, of the definitions associated with the steps of clinical judgment. So what does noticing mean? Uh, make sure that you not only know the definition, but a few examples of how students would demonstrate this, this level of clinical judgment and how you as a faculty member can engage students to ensure that they are competent in that specific area. All right, and then the second part is competencies. So students learn to engage in each of Tanner's steps using Caputi's clinical judgment competencies. Okay, so there are 19 critical thinking skills that are incorporated into these four steps. So that's why I wanna make sure that you spend some time in this area. And the last part I wanna reiterate related to critical thinking and clinical judgment is some specific ways that it is suggested that we as nurse educators develop our ability to engage students in critical thinking and develop clinical judgment. So number one is through our own professional development. So those faculty to faculty encounters that we have during our council meetings and with, during our committee meetings where we may ask questions or develop a deeper understanding related to content as we think about and strategize how we can incorporate teaching strategies to develop 
critical thinking and clinical judgment. During faculty to student encounters, such as during student evaluations and clinical encounters. And then independently, thinking about, again, those teaching and assessment strategies that we can incorporate into our clinical setting, if we are clinical nurse educators, or into the didactic experience as we teach and um, encourage students to apply theoretical concepts. I also want to point out that the social cognitive learning theory states that students learn through observe, uh, observation of others. And we know that to be correct. Students learn a lot from each other just as they learn from us. So we must role model as nurse educators those skills that we expect to see in the students. The last part I want to reiterate is on page 13 in Dr. Um, Caputi's book. And that focuses on creating opportunities for learners to develop their own critical thinking. Well, how do we do that? One key step in the process, as we know, is developing that solid foundation of learning. When we think about Bloom's taxonomy, it starts with remembering. And then we scaffold our students' learning uh, as they continue in the program and in, through the course we help them better understand those concepts so that they can move beyond that bottom foundational level of remembering up to teaching, right, or concept mapping, the ability for students to apply those key concepts and to teach others so that they can um, really commit to uh, the clinical application that's needed when we think about cognitive level learning. Problem-based learning, simulation, tutoring strategies, skills lab, um, case studies, especially unfolding case studies, these are all ways that we can integrate teaching strategies into our course room, into our course to enrich the student's learning experience and increase their clinical reasoning skills and ability to apply the clinical judgment that's needed in the critical in the clinical area. All right, so again, that's on page 13. And then how do we support and create a positive learning environment so students Feel comfortable speaking up and engaging in the development of clinical judge um, in the development of clinical judgment. So these are some key elements that I want to make sure you think about on your journey for preparing for the CNE and CNECL. We know experience is the best teacher. Those of you that have already tuned in before have heard that several times from me. Go ahead and um, and click the subscribe button if you haven't. Uh, oftentimes, uh, usually, at, at least every week, I do um, come here on YouTube or if you're watching this on a different channel and make sure that I tie in some key concepts that educators may be uh, questioning as I'm coaching them or there may be some new content that I've seen come out from NLN um, in, the, um, in the research area. So CNE readiness, make sure that you are clear about where you are on your journey. Doing the self-assessment of your knowledge gaps is an important part of your journey. There are several offerings that we have here at Dr. Sellers Educate. This is a screenshot of the self-paced CNE online review course. Okay, the benefit of this one is that it allows you as the nurse educator to kind of pace yourself um, based on content that you want to sharpen or that you may feel very confident about. So it's a review course. All eight competencies are captured here. There is content uh, that in also includes a video clip for most of the competencies. But like I said, uh, just like here on YouTube or where you're, wherever you may be watching this on, there are additional updates that I also post in the course, okay, the online self-paced course. And we're happy to announce that over the next week, the CNECL self-paced online course will also be available. So you'll be able to take advantage of both of those offerings. And remember that you can go over to the business site, Dr. Sellers Educate, to look at coaching options as well. So just know that we're here to support you on your journey. Many nurse educators are feeling like this right now, and hopefully it's on your 2021 goal list to achieve your certification. Um, but we're here to clarify any questions that you have. We don't want you to be frustrated. There are tons of resources available, but hopefully you're able to focus on the few that we have talked about. There's one other um, that I do want to mention that you hopefully have, and that is Teresa Schellenbarger's Clinical Nurse Educator Competency, the NLN um, publication. I want to make sure that you focus on 
um, the section on chapter three. Chapter three talks about facilitating learning in the healthcare environment. For those of you that are on the C and ECL journey, that's going to provide additional content for you to help you. All right. And then for those that may also have Judith Halstead's NLN core competencies for nurse educators, you are going to take a look on page 52, facilitating critical thinking and practice, as well as teaching strategies to facilitate critical thinking. Those are key pages and uh, topic areas that you want to make sure you take a look at. Yes, I know it's a lot of resources, but that is what you need to ensure that you have all of the content that you need to be successful on the CNE exam, whether it's the clinical or the traditional CNE. All right, I know that that was quite a bit for this uh, snapshot. Do know that we are here to support you again on your journey. I am Dr. Sellers Educate, and I'll see you next time.